morning and welcome to the Take Your Life Back Today show. My name is Ralph Freaks. I'm an addiction recovery coach and the host of this show, the Take Your Life Back Today show. Folks, I wanted to talk to you about uh, psychopaths. We talked about narcissists and what the Bible says about narcissism. But here are 10 signs of a psychopath. A psychopath poses threat. How do you spot a psychopath? It is good to know the traits and the red flags that come with psychopaths. Um, <clears throat> so we are going to bring up the 10 uh, signs of a psychopath. The first one, number one on our list is manipulation. Psycho psychopaths are the masters of manipulation. They are good at flattering and appearing and enchanting when they want to get their way. They are, that is the most dangerous trait that a psychopath has is manipulation. So be careful. Number two is impulsiveness. Psychopaths can be calm, collected, and most points in their life, but they also have issues and uh, with impulse and wanting to get instant gratification right there. Thus, a psychopath has a tread between the fine line between the almost obsessive want of control of the situation at their disposable right now. So, uh, impulsiveness is sign number two. Sign number three is lack of empathy, and this is really a sad one, folks. This one is the main uh, discernible sign of a psychopath. These individuals are extremely uh, egotistical. In fact, they have trouble seeing the world through other people's eyes, which is why they lack empathy in the world itself. That is a trait that is so sad. Because we as humans, as children of God, should show empathy to one of each other. Number four is dishonest. It is almost second nature for psychopaths to lie about everything. This does not have to be about issues essential to maintain their profile, uh, but also it is something to do with reputing society. But it's also in incredential uh, in other matters. Psychopaths lie because it might give them some kind of joy in which people buy into their stories, into their fictions, or because it indulges their desire to control people at even the smallest levels, my friends. Number five is uh, pro uh, uh, proactivity for violence. Violence is such a sad thing. A lot of psychopaths have tendency to be extremely violent in life. This may not even be because the particular trigger, like someone does something to annoy or aggravate them. In fact, in fact, psychopaths do not often get violent during fits of rage. Instead, they deploy violence in the very cl uh, cynical and calculated manner, getting some of the, uh, from release of torturing people uh, or even torturing animals. How sad. Number six is superficial. Psychopaths are very buttoned up and very cold, my friends. They do not let others into their lives or minds, only operate on an entirely superficial level. They might even uh, uh, elaborate stories to back up both uh, significant and insignificant details of their lives, but you may never know them for who they really are. They have perfected the art of uh, uh, deception pretending to care about people or projecting an image of themselves completely fictitious. Number seven is high intelligence. Psychopaths are very smart individuals. They know how to play people. They often nurture their intelligence by exploring different intellectual areas. Of course, this does not have to be academic to nature. Psychopaths are able to uh, perfidicate on a... Um, uh, I don't know, on a range of different topics, my friends. Regardless of whether they are expect, uh, experts in the field or not, they feel they are. They also like to show off their intelligence by uh, using a lot of technical terms uh, that set them apart from the average layman. Number eight is arrogance. One of the major signs of psychopath is, is that they have inflated sense of self-worth. They do not believe uh, anyone will catch them for what they have done as they have a strong belief in their own shrewdness. This uh, uh, cocksure attitude may manifest itself through delusions of grandeur. Number nine, a faulty moral compass. Psychopaths tend not to think about the morally the same way we do. This is why younger psychopaths uh, uh, quit often, I mean quite often, torture animals. They are testing out their boundaries of 
what others have told them is acceptable. They, um, it may just be that very idea of good and bad in, and relevant to their way of life. On the other hand, however, the sense of right and wrong could be skewed from an early age of their lives. So they think the things that they believe to be right should be followed by everyone and anyone out in the regular world. And lack, uh, number 10 is lack of culpability. Psychopaths do not feel remorseful like ordinary people. To them, people are simply things to be toyed with, and therefore any pain inflicted onto others is not caused uh, is not a cause for guilt on their own feelings. All of us can sometimes be cruel and callous, but psychopaths is not is not able to accept responsibility for their actions. Folks, ten signs of psychopaths. Do you know psychopath? Like I said two days ago, we spoke about narcissism. What the Bible says about narcissism. The next ex, uh, uh, episode is going to be about sociopath. But do you know a psychopath? And if you do, do they display any one of these ten signs? Number one was manipulation. Number two is impulsiveness. Number three is the lack of empathy. Number four is dishonesty. Number five is proclivity for violence. Number six is superficially. Number seven is high intelligence. Number eight is arrogance. Number nine is a faulty moral compass. And number 10 is lack of culpability. A psychopath poses a threat. How do we spot a psychopath? Well, one of those 10 traits that I just told you, if not all of them, you're going to find in a psychopath. It is good to know the traits and the red flags of people who have psychopathic tendencies so that you can avoid them altogether or learn to deal with them if you already know such individuals in your life. Please follow and pay attention to these 10 traits, again, of a psychopath. Manipulation, impulsiveness, lack of empathy, dishonesty, productivity for violence, superficially, high intelligence, arrogance, a faulty moral compass, and lack of culpability, folks. Psychopaths, beware of them. Although they are human, they are children of God. But you need to see and understand the red flags they possess, folks. Two days ago, I spoke to you about an incident I had at a local bank where the teller accidentally gave me back $300, and, and um, you know, I just felt, what if, what if I keep it? What if this person gets fired? And uh, like I've done before, uh, the, uh, through the power of prayer and my strong belief in God, I stood back online and I returned that $300. And the moral of this little uh, mentioning again from two days ago, because it's, uh, it's something I needed to bring up, is that I truly believe that God works in miracle ways. The miracle here is my, my wife for over a year now has been wanting to open up a business called Brown Bag, which was going to be like a, uh, some sort of little food type of um, uh, store. Uh, brown bag was originated, the idea was originated to have a brown bag with a uh, cold cut sandwich, uh, it could be uh, a vegetable, uh, I mean, a fruit or vegetable, a pastry and a drink, all for five dollars, but we are expanding that idea to make it breakfast, lunch and dinner uh, for folks. But anyway, to make a long story short, uh, out of nowhere, uh, we befriended someone who owns uh, a couple of I guess you can call them like reconditioned 7-Elevens and also a local motel. And uh, we uh, have uh, uh, spoken to this gentleman. Uh, my wife is going to be starting uh, the first of the three, uh, hopefully in the next month and a half, uh, locally. And uh, uh, if everything works out, we can expand and get hire some people where we can run uh, the same sort of brown bag at a hotel. Uh, where people actually can order from their room and we will deliver to their room and, and as well as uh, we can also uh, operate um, uh, another location. So God has worked in a miracle way again. And when you do good, you get good. Folks, if this isn't true test, if this isn't a true sign that God does look out for everyone, I don't know what is. If you are doing the right things in life, right things will happen. If you believe in God and you believe in the power of prayer, you will automatically always do the right thing, and God will never, ever do the wrong thing for you. He will always look out for you. 
We've been waiting over a year. We weren't pushing it because I do know that God will come through sooner or later. When he feels we're ready for it, this is the time where I think that we're ready because uh, with my job, I'm pretty settled now. And, of course, I'm not much help to my wife with this new business except for on weekends. But I think we are ready. So let today be the first day of your new life by truly believing that God will work with you. But you have to start believing in God. You have to believe in the power of prayer. And you have to show that you want to live a spiritual life. Because when you live a spiritual life and you live a life through the power of prayer, you will find that new things, better things will happen in your own life. Call me at 844 because together you and I, we can help each other take our lives back. And may God bless you on this beautiful Saturday. Uh, today is November 4th. And um, if you, again, need to talk to me, please feel free to call me. And let's all take our lives back. And may God bless you.